So here is the trig portion. I'm doing numbers, hopefully numbers 41 to 74 here. So we're going to start with the mod 17 trig stuff. That's our Sokotoa. So I am asking for the tangent of theta. What do we know about tangent? It's opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. By the way, on your final review sheet, you might want to write somewhere... Because even though you assume that you will probably remember it, it's just nice to know that you don't have to remember it because it's there for you. Um, another suggestion as your, for your note card, just as we're starting things, um, some people are very organized with their note cards, and then there are some people that are just scribbling stuff down, and then there are some people that come in and leave it completely blank. Um, if you want a way of organizing it, one thing that might be beneficial is either use different colors for the different topics or outline the areas in different colors. For example, all of your trig notes, you might want to outline in one color or put in a certain color box, and then all of your sequences and series put in another box, and your statistics stuff in another box. That kind of can help you know where to look as you're going through the test. Just makes it a little more user-friendly. Um, okay. So, I have theta. What is opposite theta? Five. There's opposite. What is my adjacent? Twelve. Why is my adjacent not thirteen? Because that's the hypotenuse. So, five over twelve can't reduce. That's my answer to forty-one. Questions? That probably seems like five years ago doing trig that basic, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, find the sine of theta if tangent is root 13 over 6. Now remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent, which we just did. We need to find opposite over hypotenuse. So I need to draw a right triangle. Yeah? Does it matter which angle I label theta? Yeah. Yes. As long as it's not the right angle, it doesn't matter which one I label theta. Okay. So I'm going to call that one theta. I know that opposite theta is root 13, and I know that adjacent is 6. I'm going to need to find sine theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So I know that opposite is root 13. I don't know what the hypotenuse is. How am I going to find the hypotenuse here? Pythagorean theorem. 6 squared plus root 13 squared is equal to c squared, that's 36, oops, plus, what's root 13 squared? 36 plus 13 is, what is c equal? 7. So that hypotenuse is 7, put my hypotenuse there. Do I need to simplify this at all? Nope, that's my answer. We good there? 43, same type of problem, except this time I have opposite and hypotenuse. And if I'm finding tangent, I need what? Opposite over adjacent. Well, I know opposite is root 11, so let me draw a little picture for this guy, because I'm going to need to find the adjacent one. So here's my picture. I'm going to call that guy theta. <coughs> opposite is root 11. This is super teeny tiny. Let me try and zoom in for you. Um, hypotenuse is 6. How do I find that adjacent side? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. So, let's see. Root 11 squared plus, I'll call this B squared, equals 6 squared. What's root 11 squared? 11. Plus B squared equals 36. Subtract 36. B squared equals, subtract 36, come on, Franken. How about we subtract 11? B squared is 25, what's B? Five. So I put a 5 right there. Opposite over adjacent is root 11 over 5, and that's my tangent of theta that I was looking for. Easy? Okay. Let's look at this one. Find the measure of the indicated angle. Anytime you are finding the measure of the angle, 
you're going to have to do that shift sine or shift cosine. Remember the sine with the negative 1? You're going to have to use sine to the negative 1 or cosine to the negative 1 or tangent to the negative 1, any of those. On some calculators, it is called arc sine or arc cosine or arc tangent. Those two things are interchangeable. Okay, So I don't know about the calculator on edge elastic. If it says arc sine, it means the same thing. Okay, now I'm looking for this angle. What are they giving me? They are giving me what is 37 adjacent, right? And 57, they are giving me the hypotenuse. Yeah? <coughs> what part of Sokotoa uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So I'm going to not use sine in the name, I'm going to use cosine and arc cosine. Um, so let's see, cosine, I'm just going to call it theta, even though they haven't called it theta, I'm going to call it theta, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Ah! My pencil keeps breaking. Okay. So how do I find the angle measure now? I do inverse cosine or arc cosine of that measure will, it will give me what theta is. So on my calculator, second cosine, 37 divided by 57 is 49.52. Again, your final exam is multiple choice. So as far as rounding is concerned, you'll just have to look at the options to figure it out. Usually with angles, we go to the nearest whole number. So 49.5, I'm going to call that 50 degrees. Questions? Beautiful. 45. Find the measure of the indicated side. Okay, I'm looking for x. x is related to the angle they've given me how. It is the hypotenuse, correct? Yes. How is 6 related to the given angle? Adjacent. adjacent. What part of Sokotoa uses adjacent and hypotenuse? So I'm going to say cosine of 34 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And this is, how I, this is what I have to solve. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. That gives me x times cosine 34 degrees equals 6. Divide both sides by cosine 34 degrees. And what do I get? x equals 6 divided by cosine 34, 7.23. Again, you're going to have to look and see what the options are for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and round this to 7.2. And there is no miles, feet, or anything like that, so I'm just going to call it 7.2. So far, so good? <coughs> I am not meant to write, oh my goodness, I am not meant to write with mechanical pencils. I keep breaking the lids. All right, find A, B. Can I call this side little c? Yep. Since it's across from C. Um, what's different about this one? It gives me two angles and a side. Even more so than that, this is the first one I'm seeing that does not have what? A right angle. As soon as I don't see the right angle, I have to use. You may want to put the law of sines on your little note card. Right? It's sine A over little a equals sine B over little b equals sine C over little c. So I'm going to say sine 115 over little c because that's what I'm trying to find. That has to be a part of my equation. Now. My other fraction, I need to know both the angle and the side opposite. And usually I like to have both of them given, but that's not going to be the case here because 27, I don't have the opposite side, do I? I do have 19, so I will put that there because I'm fairly confident I can figure out angle A without too much mistake, right? How am I going to find angle A? 180 minus 115 minus 27 makes angle A 38 degrees. 
So I'm going to say sine 38 degrees. How do I solve this? What do I do? Cross multiply. 19 times sine 115 is equal to C times sine 38 degrees. Oops. So I'm going to, let's see, divide by sine 38. So I get C equals whatever I get when I plug this all into my calculator. So let's see. 19 sine 115 is 17.2 blah 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 divided by sine 38. 27.96, I'm going to call that what? 28 centimeters. And that's my answer for 46. Okay, questions there? Again, as soon as it's not a right triangle, no Pythagorean theorem, no Sokotoa. You can use law of science. Find the measure of the indicated angle to the nearest degree. So I'm looking for angle H. So again, I'm going to set up my law of signs. I have an angle and a side opposite, don't I? Right there. So sine 123 degrees over 43. And now my other fraction, I want angle H. And then its opposite side, which is 15. Same process as before. I'm going to cross multiply. 15 times sine 123 equals 43 sine h. Now I'm getting h by itself, so at first I have to get sine h by itself. So I'm going to divide by 43. So let's see, what does sine h equal? So whatever the answer to that madness is. So 15 sine 123 divided by 43. So it's this 0.29 blah blah blah. How do I find H? I'm looking for an angle again, which means I have to use that inverse stuff for the arc. So I'm not going to clear this. I'm going to hit second sign, and then I'm going to use that previous answer button so that it plugs the whole fraction in for me. And I get angle H is equal to 17.0 degrees, so I'm going to call that 17 degrees. Wait, can you repeat that step? This step? Yeah, on the calculator. On the calculator. Okay. So I did this whole thing right here. 15 sine 1, 2, 3. Oops. Divided by 43, and I've got this guy right here. If I need to find the inverse sine of that, I'm going to plug inverse sine of the previous answer. So second sine, and then the previous answer on this cal calculator is down here above the negative sign. So second answer, and it's going to take the inverse sine of the whole decimal without rounding it off, which keeps its accuracy. And I get 17 degrees. Okay. All right, find the area. One half side times side times the sine of the included angle. Again, something you might want to put on your note card. One half times side times side times the sine of the included angle. All you have to do is plug that into my calculator. 0. 0.5 times 12 times 12 times. Let me fix my parentheses there times the sine of 36, 42.3, we're talking about inches, so I'm going to call it inches squared. Again, a formula for your note card. Questions there? How do you write the formula? I would say one half, on my note card I would write this, side, side, Sine included angle. The way it's officially done is like one half A times B times <coughs> sine of C or something like that. But 
this to me helps me apply it to all circumstances, regardless of if it's A, B, or C. So does it doesn't matter if like, the painting between two sides? Or? It has to be the included angle. So it has to be the angle that's between the sides. I can't do these two sides and then the sign of this angle. That's not going to help. Okay. Has to be the sign of the included angle. All right. Convert the measure to radians. How do I convert to radians? Multiply by? Pi over 180. That gives me negative 255 pi over 180. Go to your calculator. Do, let's see, negative 255 divided by 180. Change it to a fraction. Change it to an improper fraction, and I get negative 17 pi over 12. That's my answer. Let your calculator do the hard work for you. Again, second fraction to decimal, or let me see, second, and then this button right here takes it from a decimal to a fraction, and then second, and then your fraction button will change that mixed number into an improper fraction, which is what you need for radians. Okay? Same deal here. Multiply by pi over 180. That gives me negative 140. I'm off the screen, aren't I? Negative 140 pi over 180. Again, you can go to your calculator. Negative 140 divided by 180. Hang on. Negative 140 divided by 180. There we go. Change it to a fraction. Negative 7 ninths, so I have negative 7 pi over 9. Questions there? <coughs> All right, going the other way. Changing to degrees. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of what I just did. Multiply by 180 over pi. Again, stuff for your note card. You might want to write something like radians to degrees times 180 over pi. Degrees to radians times pi over 180. You repeated this already, but you can't, we can't use our calculator. Okay, so let's see. 31 times 180 is 5580 pi over 6 pi. Well, the pi's are going to cancel. Here I go again, breaking lead. And 5580 divided by 6 930 degrees. We good? Next one, I'm going to zoom out a little bit just because I keep going off the screen here. All right, times 180 over pi. Again, the pi's are going to cancel. You can cancel in there or here where I did over there. Um, I'm going to do 53 times 180. That gives me 9540. On top, on the bottom, I have 36, 265 degrees. Questions there? Beautiful. All right, now we start getting into the circle stuff. Find the measure of each angle. Is this a positive angle or a negative angle? Negative angle, how do I know? Starting off by going down, so I know my answer is going to be negative. This is in degrees, so my answer is in degrees. It is more than one revolution, right? This would be 360. What would another 90 degrees? Would be to 450. And then how much I, am I going further? Another 45 degrees, because those two together have to equal 90. So 360, 450 plus 440. Sorry, 450 plus 45? 495. Pencils are not my friend today. 495 degrees in the negative direction. Okay. All right, this one's in radians. This is a positive or a negative angle? <coughs> positive because it's going up. It is more than one revolution, right? Okay, notice we are counting in twelfths, so one revolution would be how many twelfths? You want to say twelve twelfths, but it's not twelve twelfths. This would be twelve twelfths, this would be two pi or twenty-four twelfths, right? Yep. Twenty-four twelfths. Okay, 
what would another quadrant be? Think about this. If 180 degrees was 12 twelfths, 360 was 24 twelfths, what is one quadrant? Six twelfths. So I have another six twelfths here. Right? And then it tells me I have another what? Five twelfths. What does that give me? 24 plus 6 is 30 plus 5. I have 35. Throw your pi in there. That's what I've got. Again, you can translate it into degrees, but on a multiple choice test, that means you're going to have to translate all the answers in degrees, into degrees also in order to find what it matches up with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll have scratch papers. Okay, let me grab one of these purple sheets because I think this will be helpful. Find the reference angle, 120 degrees. Here's 120 degrees. Reference angle goes to 180 or goes to the x-axis. So what's my reference angle? <clears throat> 60 degrees, right? 60 degrees away. 56, 310, is that one on here? No, but I know that 310 would be somewhere in here, right? Between 300 and 315? Yes? So how far would 310 be away from 360? 50 degrees. That's my reference angle. Okay. 4 pi over 3, negative 4 pi over 3. Well, I could do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4 pi over 3, what's my distance? Or what's my shortcut for these guys? Reference angle is pi over 3, what's my reference angle here? Pi over 4. If I get something that doesn't have a denominator like my unit circle, I have to do a little bit more thinking about that. Use your fraction button to help you. All right, coterminal to 23 pi over 12. This one is in radians, and all of these options are in radians, correct? Yes? Yes. Thank you. So um, what do I need to do? I need to add 2 pi, or I need to subtract 2 pi. That's how I find coterminal. So what I'm going to do is 23 over 12 using my fraction button. We good with that? It's called 1 and 1 12. I'm going to add 2 because that's adding 2 pi, right? Change it to an improper fraction. 47 twelfths. That one is coterminal. Would 35 twelfths be coterminal? One more revolution takes you from 23 to 47. Skips over 35, doesn't it? So that one is not coterminal. Um, let's see. They keep going. Can I add another 2? 71 twelfths. They skip over 59 twelfths. And they don't get as high as 71, do they? So I think 47 is the only one I get by adding 2 pi. So now let me go back to 23 twelfths, my starting point. And this time I'm going to subtract 2 and see what I get. I get down to negative 1 twelfth. That would be right here. What did I skip over? Pi over 12, which happens to be listed twice. What else did I skip over? 11 pi over 12. If I went from 23 to negative 1, I skipped over 11, didn't I? Let's see if I subtract another 2, do I get to negative 25? I do. So that one is coterminal also. Okay. Number 60 is a little bit easier because we're just dealing with degrees. I'm going to add 360 or I'm going to subtract 360. So, coterminal to 240. Let's start off by adding 360. That gets me 600. Is 600 on this list? Yes. There are ones that are higher. Did I skip any? Getting from 240 to 600. What was passed over? 420. Notice 240 is on the list. Technically, it is coterminal <coughs> with itself. Um, let's see. I'm going to add another 360, not 230. 
Let me make sure I did that right. 240 plus 360 plus 360, 960. So that one's coterminal. I skipped over 780. It never hit there. It means that 780 is not a full revolution away. It's a part of a revolution. All these guys seem to be less than, so I'm going to go back to my 240 and I'm, I'm going to subtract 360. Negative 120. What did I skip over? 60. 60. Ah! Let me subtract another 360. Negative 480. I skipped over 300, so those four are what I am coterminal with. Capiche? All right, use a unit circle to find the exact value. This is where we need to start remembering that cosine is asking for x, sine is asking for y, tangent is x, I'm sorry, y <laughs> over x, or sine over cosine. We also need to remember that cosine and secant go together, sine and cosecant go together, and tangent and cotangent go together. You see all that? Again, stuff that you might want to organize on your purple card. All right, cosine of negative 120 degrees. 360, negative 120 would put me where? Here's negative 90, and then another 30 degrees would put me here. So in the negative direction, we are coterminal with 240. What's the cosine there? Negative 1 half. Okay, tangent of 11 pi over 2. I'm going to count by pi over 2s until I get to 11. Positive direction, pi over 2s are 90 degrees. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we are coterminal with 270 degrees. Tangent is sine over cosine or y over x. What is negative 1 over 0? Undefined. Okay. And cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of what? Sine. So I'm going to find the sine of 3 pi over 4, and then I'm going to flip it. On my unit circle, 3 pi over 4 is directly here. What's the sine? Root 2 over 2. So if I flip that, that becomes 2 over root 2, which I do need to simplify. That gives me 2 root 2 over 2, or just what? Root 2. Now, notice I didn't worry about the all students talk crap stuff. Reason being, if I'm pulling the values straight off here, they are naturally negative or positive as long as I have pulled it off an angle that is coterminal. Okay? All right, let's turn the page on a roll here. Oop, I can't see what I'm looking for here. It says I'm looking for sine of theta right there on number 64. So I need the sine of negative 225. Negative 225, that is coterminal with what? Positive 135, what's the sine? Root 2 over 2. Secant of 1050. Okay, that's the reciprocal of cosine, so I have to figure out which angle does this match up with and then find the cosine of that, right? And then flip it. So let's see, 360, another revolution is 720. Yes? 720, what's another quadrant? 720 plus 90, 810, right? plus another quadrant would be 900. Another quadrant is 990. I need to get to 1050. So how far am I in there? 1050 minus 990 <coughs> means this is 60 degrees. So what am I coterminal with? If I'm 60 degrees into that first quadrant, I'm coterminal with 30 degrees. So the cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. Secant is going to be the reciprocal. 
multiply by root 3 over root 3. That gives me 2 root 3 over 3. Again, first quadrant, everything's positive. Cotangent. 5 pi over 4. I see that I'm at a pi over 4 angle, yes? So if I find that pi over 4 angle in that quadrant, that's down here. Cotangent, well, tangent is y over x, so cotangent is going to be what? x over y. So let's see. That's going to be negative root 2 over 2 over negative root 2 over 2. What does that simplify to? Positive 1. Because a negative over a negative makes a positive, and root 2 over 2 over itself is 1. Questions there? All right, 67. Use the point to find the value of the ratio. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm going to start off by finding the cosine here, and then I will reciprocate it. So I have a triangle, yes, right there. Where is theta, left or bottom? Left. Three is here. Six is here. By the way, is cosine, and therefore secant, positive or negative in the fourth quadrant? It's positive. So secant's going to be positive also. All right, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and flip that. We want hypotenuse over adjacent. I don't know hypotenuse right now, but I do know adjacent. Which one's adjacent? Three. Three is my adjacent. How do I find the hypotenuse? Pythagorean theorem. Nine plus 36 is c squared. What do I have here? 45 is c squared, square root, and what does 45 simplify to? 9 and 5, it's 3 rad 5, isn't it? So if I put that in my fraction, 3 over 3 cancels out, what's my answer? Rad 5. Yes, I know I'm going quick, I'm trying to make sure that I get it all in. Okay. All right, graph the function. It says state the amplitude, period, domain, range. What do we know domain is? All real numbers. Over here, amp, period, domain, range. Again, domain is all real numbers. What is my amplitude here? One-third. Not negative one-third, just one-third. What's my amplitude here? One. Okay. This one says degrees, so how am I going to find the period? 360 divided by B. What is B? So what is 360 divided by 4? 90. So a period is... 90 degrees. So I'm going to put 90 degrees. What's half of 90? 45. What's half of 45? 22.5. Multiply it by 3 to get that third one. 67.5 degrees. Because it, once you found this one, you found what they're counting by. So this times 2 times 3. Okay. All right, I have cosine, which is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah? But I have negative, which means it's reversed. Yeah? Um, let's see, amplitude is one-third. So I'm going to go three lines down for negative one and three lines up for positive one, so that way I know one-third is just one line. And I'm going to go bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, and that's what we're looking for. Easy peasy. 
69, I have a midline change. How do I know I have a midline change? There's a plus two. I need to stop. Go back. Range? Negative one third is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to one third. Okay, now I can move on. My midline is at two, which means I have a shift up. How do I find the period? We're using degrees again, 360 <coughs> divided by what's my B value? Which ends up being 360 times five, doesn't it? 1800. Oops, got a zero. So 1800, what's half of 1800? 900. 450, and then four, oops. 450 times 3 gives me 1350 right here. Amplitude is 1. I have a sign, which is middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. Middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. That's what I've got. Again, the period was 1800 degrees. What's my range? 1 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 3. We good there? Questions? All right, moving on. Number 70. This time we're using radians. <coughs> so again, what is it that I need? Amplitude, period... What's my domain going to be? All real numbers. So again, all real numbers. Um, let's see, what's the amplitude here? Where's my midline? Negative 1, which means I'm going to go up 2 from there, which gets me to positive 1, and down 2 from there, which gets me to negative 3. Yes? 2 pi divided by b. What's b? There is no b value, which means it is 2 pi over 1 is just... So I have 2 pi as the period. That would make this pi, this pi over 2, and this 3 pi over 2. <coughs> Cosine, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Not negative, so it's not backwards. So, top, oh, my pencil, middle, bottom, middle, top. And again, hook those tops around. What's my range? Negative 3 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to who no. Then all of a sudden we're back to degrees? Okay. Amplitude is 1. Period would be 360 divided by 2, which is what? 180. So the period is 180. 180, 90, 45, 135. We have sine, which is just middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. So middle, top, middle, bottom, middle because the midline is just at zero, correct? What's my range? Negative one is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to one. If the midline is zero, does the lowest divide by two? On the test, you can't go wrong with that. On the final exam, it's multiple choice. You're not highlighting anything. Okay. All right, last three problems. Find the equation. So I'm going to look at the y-axis first off. And if it's at the top or the bottom, that makes it a cosine, cosine. If it's at the middle, that makes it a sine. See, this is in the middle of your wave. This is at the bottom of a wave. This is at the top of a wave. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Um, let's see. From top to bottom, what's exactly halfway between? I think halfway between is right here. Yes? On this one, it would be right here. And on this one, it is right 
there, your exact halfway point. Those are all my midlines, which are going to be my K values. This one is one up, so I'm going to have a plus one at the end. This one is one down, so I'm going to have a minus one. This one is what? Down. Two up, so I'm going to have a plus two at the end. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, this one goes top, middle, bottom, middle, top. Is that positive cosine or negative cosine? That is positive cosine. So my A value is going to be positive. What is my A value or my amplitude? Two? Because the whole graph only goes two away from cosine. And then we're in degrees, so I'm going to do 360 divided by B is equal to, where's the end of one cycle? Top, middle, bottom, middle, top, right here. 360 is the length of a period. So 360B is equal to 360. What is B equal? 1. So I have 1 theta. That's my answer there. Amplitude is 2. Period is 360. Domain is all real numbers. Range would be negative 1 is less than or equal to, I'm sorry, yes, is less than or equal to y, is less than or equal to 3. Okay. All right, what's my amplitude here? Careful, that's not a 1. What they're counting by is 0 0.5. And since they're using decimals, I'm going to use decimals. This is starting at the bottom, which does make it a cosine, but it's not a regular cosine. It's a negative cosine. By the way, I should have equals y at some point here. And then what is the length of a period? Middle, top, I'm sorry, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom. 4 pi, so 2 pi over b is equal to 4 pi, or in other words, 4 pi times b equals 2 pi. What's my b value? 1 half. 1 half times theta is theta over 2. Again, you should have the y equals there. And the last one, what's my amplitude? Three. It's going middle bottom, which means it's a negative three. Middle bottom, middle top, middle. The period ends at 90. So 360 over B equals 90, or 90 B equals 360. Divide by 90, B equals four. That gives me four theta right there. Okay. Happy studying!